Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll discuss how to buy suits online, what mistakes to avoid, the pros and cons of buying suits online, what brands you can consider, and all the ins and outs you need to know so you get a suit that ultimately fits you. Unfortunately, these days the internet gives you the limitless opportunity to buy a suit, but that wasn't always the case. In the past, you were limited to local shops, department stores, or maybe if you traveled, you could pick up a suit at a haberdashery or at a tailor. So first of all, what are the pros and cons of buying a suit online? Let's start with the pros. The biggest pro is arguably your choice. You find tons of brands from around the world in different price brackets with different stylistic details and different levels of workmanship. You can find exactly what you're after and you wouldn't be able to get that locally at your tailor store or haberdashery, let alone your city or probably even your state. The second pro is price. No matter if you shop for a pre-owned or vintage suit or an off-the-rack suit, chances are you can find a better value in the price bracket you're looking at online. I find that's particularly true for pre-owned garments where you can sometimes save up to 80% off and you can learn how to do that in this video here. New garments online are sometimes less expensive, but generally they're not more expensive than in the store. The third big pro is the ease of use. You can look for suits online in your off time, at home or wherever you are, on your phone, on your computer, sitting there on your PJs, slurping your coffee. You can interrupt your search and you don't have to travel anywhere, incur travel costs and waste entire days or blocks of time. Another pro that many men don't even consider is the fact that you have all the time in the world to try on a suit at home, look at it and decide if it's for you or not without the feeling of being hassled by a salesperson who just wants to get that sale. It provides me the time to calmly assess what suit alterations are necessary and if you're not sure what can and can't be done with a suit in terms of alterations, check out this video here. Also, if you buy a custom or a customized suit or a made-to-measure suit online, most companies offer a fit guarantee. So if it doesn't work out, you can just have the suit remade. Just make sure you actually read the fine print of their fit guarantee because sometimes they just provide you with an alterations credit and you have to hand in receipts, but that's not what you want. If I buy size clothes online from a brand, I typically order multiple sizes so I can just try things on and determine what size is right for me because in the menswear world, there's a lot of vanity sizing and sometimes a size large is exactly right. Sometimes I need a medium, sometimes I need an extra, extra large. Yes, it pays to take a closer look at the size chart, but sometimes I found they're not 100% accurate. Of course, depending on how expensive the items are you buy, you may have to deal with a limitation on your credit card and you'll have to deal with returns, which brings us to the cons. Personally, I hate making returns, no matter it's online or offline. It's always a hassle. It always feels like a total waste of time to me. And it's simply something I don't enjoy. With that in mind, we try to make returns at our own store. For For Belvedere products, extremely easy. We have free shipping. You can do it all online on your schedule. But still, it's a certain amount of work. Another big con of online suit shopping is the fact that you cannot physically feel the garment. Yes, companies can throw out the fabric brands they use and they can talk about their soft construction and all those things, but it means different things for different vendors. And ultimately, you have to feel it, you have to wear it and see how you like it to really make that call. Also, unless you're able to buy many different models and compare them side by side, that's an aspect that you don't get. If you just buy one or two suits, you get them, then you have to return them, then maybe you have to buy the next ones. And by the time you have the third suit, you probably may have forgotten how the first one felt. Obviously, even if you end up finding something that really works for you, the process is much longer, which is another con. Now that we got the pros and cons squared away, let's look at the different ways you can buy a suit online. First, you can buy pre-owned or vintage suits at pages like Poshmark or Facebook Marketplace or eBay. In different countries, there are so many smaller sites that focus on more higher-end suits where you can buy them. 
The second option is to buy a new off the rack suit that is ready to wear where you can see the pictures and it's in stock and they can just ship it right away in the size that at least you think will fit you. Then there's the market of custom suits, which are typically online made to measure suits. And finally, most recently, I've also seen the term online bespoke suit. To learn more about the specific distinction between ready to wear, made to measure and bespoke, please check out this in-depth video here. In a nutshell, each one of those has their own advantages and disadvantages. Vintage or pre-owned suits are probably the least expensive, but it also means you're wearing another man's clothes. Off the rack suits are typically a step up in price, but what you see is what you get. You can get them quickly, but the problem is they're all symmetrical and humans are simply not symmetrical. Because of that, fit is often an issue. With a made to measure suit, it means you take all your measurements and they take an existing pattern and adapt it so it should work for your measurements. Typically, you can choose from a broad range of fabrics and from a menu in detail. So you can pick different linings, different buttons and stylistic things, but it's typically limited to a menu. Bespoke traditionally means that a tailor takes your measurements and he looks at your body, at all your imperfections and your asymmetries and the little details that you want. Design-wise, the sky is really the limit. For example, the always Deborah Henry Kierl once showed me that on a bespoke suit he had made by Stephen Hitchcock in a wonderful green fabric with an orange and yellow window pane, he wanted a little channel that went down his sleeve all the way along his suit jacket down the pants so he could perform magician tricks more easily. On top of that, you get a lot more handwork, you get a fully floating canvas and the details are spot on and exactly to your specifications. The downside is it also costs a lot of money because many tailoring hours go into it and you probably also want to use really high quality fabric because why spend all that money if the fabric is not up to snuff? Now, online bespoke is a bit more difficult because you don't have that physical tailor connection. Yes, there is software and there are apps and they can analyze your body and get an exact understanding of what's going on in terms of measurements and imperfections. But there's also a certain chemistry between a tailor and you that gets lost online. Oftentimes companies try to counterbalance that by sending you trial garments and try on garments so you can test things along the way without just finishing the entire suit and then presenting it with you just to find out it doesn't fit the way you want it to. In any case, no matter what of those four options you choose, the key to a well-fitting suit are the proper measurements. You've probably heard it a hundred times. The fit of a suit matters most. And it's not just me saying that, but just look around the internet. That being said, people have differing opinions of what a well-fitting suit looks like. We created an in-depth video series about just that topic, which you can check out here. Now, if you buy a suit online that is vintage or pre-owned, chances are you need actual garment measurements. Why? Well, because that's what most people will be able to provide you with. So ideally, you already have a suit and you know what measurements you have to look for. If that's not you and you don't have a jacket or trousers that you can actually start with, then I would say you have to estimate, eyeball it, get something, then pin it down and determine what the exact garment measurements will be that will work for you. If you buy an off the rack suit online, some brands will provide their garment measurements, others will provide body measurements. So it's best to just have both. For made to measure and bespoke suits, you generally need body measurements, even though some companies may offer you their app that will help you measure yourself or use their AI powered sizing algorithm, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, don't do that. Take the extra time to get your real measurements and follow their instructions. Why? Well, because some companies measure the arm length from the back of your spine, others just on the sleeve, the inside, the outside, and you want to make sure you give them the right measurements. Otherwise, the suit fit will be a disaster. Sometimes even made to measure bespoke companies offer to provide garment measurements so they can just copy what you have at home. But then that's not truly a made to measure or bespoke comment anymore in my book. So how do you get your measurements? Well, it's easy for garment measurements because you can take them yourself. For body measurements, you want a second person involved. 
Ideally, it could be a tailor or someone with experience in measuring, but even your partner or a friend can do it because typically you have step-by-step -step instructions. Don't even try to measure yourself. It simply is not going to work. No, don't get a tape measure out of your toolbox. Instead, get a soft sewing measuring tape from a reputable brand like Zynga. You can find them at sewing supply or drugstores or online for under $5. You can find the one we recommend on the website here. Why is it so important? Well, if you get the cheaper ones or sometimes the ones the brand provide you with, they may change over time and it simply is not the right length. And if you measure and your measuring tape is off by an inch, well, that defeats the point of accurate measurements. When you take the body measurements for a suit, you should wear dress pants, dress shoes, and a dress shirt. Do not wear the jacket when you take the measurements. Unless, of course, the specific company instructs you to do so. Even if it might hurt your ego a little bit, you always want to measure the body you have, not the body you aspire to. Honestly, I've seen it time and time again. Once people get measured, they're all excited, they're nervous, and all of a sudden, they stand up, or the shoulders go back, and the chest comes out. Sometimes the arms don't hang the way they normally do, and even the way they stand changes. The problem is, all these artificial changes will later lead to a garment that will not fit you in your normal state, which is a terrible thing. Typically, before I get measured, I close my eyes, I take some deep breaths, and I just shake my limbs and relax. And then I just stand normally and don't even think about being measured. That way, I'm standing in my normal posture, in my normal position, just the way I will be 90% of the time later on when I actually wear the suit. So what exactly should you measure? For a jacket, the most important measurements are chest, shoulder, and length of the jacket, along with maybe sleeve length. For pants, it's the inseam and the waist size. So how do you actually measure your shoulders? Take your measuring tape and start where you can feel the shoulder bone. Keep it snugly, keep it snugly. Go over the top part of your spine and to the other side of your shoulder where you can reach the bone and measure that distance. Most men will measure between 18 and 21 inches, which is about 45 to 53 centimeters. Also, pay attention to the shoulder shape. Some people have a very erect posture. Others have a very round back. If your back is round, you may want to add about half an inch or a centimeter to the measurements so you have a better feeling of comfort when you wear the jacket. Otherwise, if it's too tight in the back, you always feel like your movement is restricted. If you want to take garment measurements, you can do so on a mannequin and you just do it from the one sleeve head to the other, typically the area where the seam on the shoulder hits the sleeve head. For certain bespoke suits sometimes, that seam can be a little off and a little further down. You typically want to be on top of the shoulder. Some anti measure companies will also ask you if you have square shoulders or very sloping shoulders, and the even better ones will allow you to define a different slope on either side, because many men have a different shoulder slope on each side. For example, my right shoulder is about two inches or five centimeters lower than my left one, and that has a huge impact on the way a suit fits. Measuring the chest is fairly easy. You just take the measuring tape, hold it around your chest at the widest point. You can breathe in and breathe out just to find the right length, and you want it pretty snug, but not super tight. Typically, the measurement is right around your nipples. Take this measurement while you stand and not while you sit because it can change a little bit. Most men will fall between 38 and 46 inches for their chest measurements, which is about 96 centimeters to about 116 centimeters. In the US and the UK, most suit jackets or even though entire suits will be rated by their chest size. So if you measure 42 inches around your chest and you're of normal height, your size will be 42 regular. The equivalent of a 42 regular in Europe is a size 52. So typically, you just add 10 in the size. So a American 44 is a European 54. On a more technical level, a size 52 is technically the measurement from pit to pit, just measured one way. So you take 42 inches and convert it to centimeters, you get 106.68 centimeters. If you divide it by two, so you get the half measurement, you end up at somewhere around 
53 centimeters, which is very close to the 52 centimeter size of a European system. Let's say your chest measures 42 and you're a taller person. Typically you get a size 42 long or 42 L. If you measure 42 inches around your chest and you're shorter, you get the size 42 short or 42 S. Now European suit sizing for long and short sizes is a bit different. The equivalent of a 42 long is not 52 long, but instead 106 which is a little more than double the number 52. If you're shorter, your size will not be 52 short, but it will be 26, which is half of 52. To make sizing super easy on you, just refer to this size chart here. If you want garment measurements for the chest, you just lay the jacket on the floor, you button it, you kind of slightly lift up the sleeves and measure from pit to pit. No, don't pull a lot on the garment because as you can see, there's a bit of flex, but you want the accurate measurement, which is when it lays flat in a normal silhouette. A common rule of thumb to determine the proper jacket length is to measure from the top of your spine down the back to a level where you have your knuckles clinched into a half fist, and that should be the length of your jacket. Now, frankly, in my mind, this is a bogus rule because men of identical height can have drastically different arm lengths. Also, men at the same height may have longer torsos and shorter legs and vice versa. So to get the proper jacket length, measure from the top of your spine where your jacket collar would usually sit all the way down to the bottom hem of your pants and then divide it by two. And that would be your jacket length. In recent years, training jackets are cut quite a bit shorter. So when you subtract it in half, subtract an additional one to two inches or two and a half to five centimeters. So you get that shorter jacket look. If you measure the garment laid flat on the floor and take the measurement from just underneath the collar to the base of the jacket, and then also measure the jacket back length, including the collar, because different vendors provide different back length measurements. One aspect to keep in mind is that many off the rack and made to measure jackets are cut slightly longer in the front than in the back, whereas true bespoke jackets are typically designed so the front and the back have the exact same length when the wearer stands. Now, obviously, it also depends on your posture. If you have sloped roping shoulders, your front will likely be longer than if you stand in an erect posture with the exact same clothing. Getting the front and back balance exactly right is really difficult even with made to measure and in many programs it's not something they can do. And I know of people who've gone bespoke for that sole reason. Next up is sleeve length. You measure it from your shoulder bone down on your relaxed arm to your knuckle or the base of your thumb. Most men want to show a bit of shirt cuff, so some subtract an inch and half an inch, and quarter inch, three quarters of an inch, or anywhere from one to three centimeters. It looks particularly dapper if the amount of shirt that peeks out above your collar matches the distance on your shirt cuffs. For a super comprehensive guide on sleeve length for your suit jacket and your shirts and how they have to work together, please check out this video. It's important that you measure both arms because many men have slightly different arm lengths. That being said, the final garment sleeve length is not just defined by your arm length, but it can also be impacted by the slope of your shoulder. For example, my left arm is a quarter inch longer than my right arm, but my right arm is also about two inches more sloped than my left. Because of that, with ready to wear jackets, typically my left sleeve needs to be more than a quarter inch longer than my right arm. In a bespoke garment, all of this can be considered when drafting the pattern. The armhole on the right can be cut lower for me, and then maybe a shoulder pad can be added or not, depending on my preference. Ultimately, the exact sleeve length is defined when you actually wear it and try it on. So the tailor can ensure that you can get exactly the proper length on each side, which should be identical. For garment measurements, you typically lay the jacket flat or you can have it in a mannequin and you measure from the middle of the sleeve head on the outside of the sleeve down 
to the bottom tip. Sometimes people also measure it to the middle of the sleeve. Unfortunately, there is no gold standard. More importantly, I check if the cuffs have working sleeve buttons or not, because if they do, lengthening or shortening the jacket is a lot more difficult because you can't do it from the bottom without screwing up the proportions of the button distance to the hem of the sleeve. And so you have to shorten or lengthen it from the shoulder. Next up is the waist measurement, which is the point where traditional men's trousers would sit. And today, most trousers sit a little lower, more towards the hip. However, it's also used for jackets to create that nice hourglass silhouette that's so attractive in a suit. Many men will have a roughly six inch drop from their chest measurement to their waist size. So let's say I'm a size 40, too regular, then my waist will often be a 36. What's it six inches? That's That's about a drop of 15 centimeters from your chest measurement to your waist measurement. Sometimes on higher end ready to wear jackets, that's even reflected in the size. And you can see a size 54 drop eight, which means it's a size 54, but the drop is actually eight inches, not just six inches. To measure your waist, you typically have the slimmest point around your upper body, which is typically around your belly button. Again, keep the tape snug, but not too tight. For garment measurements, you can just lay it flat on the floor, button the jacket, and then measure right around the buttoning point or where it's its slimmest. Of course, if the jacket has a super low buttoning point or a super high one, you need to slightly adjust that measurement. Next up is the hips or seat measurement, which is measured when you stand around the widest part of your bum. For most men, it will range in the 30 to 40 inch territory, which is about 75 centimeters to 100 centimeters. My seat measurement is in fact quite a bit larger than even my chest measurement. So yes, it gives me somewhat of an hourglass shape, but it also means it's quite hard for me to find well-fitting pants. Why is that? Well, I also have a relatively normal waist size and big thighs, so I need big full cut pleated trousers that need to be darted on top. So I don't just have a huge amount of puddling fabric around my waistline. So why am I telling you all of this? Well, it's really important to be aware of your body and the challenges and problem zones that you might experience. Because if you're not, you'll likely end up in a suit that won't fit you. For example, my expectation is that any pair of trousers or pants I buy online will need to be altered heavily because they're simply not cut for me. Next up is the inseam, which is measured from your crotch area to the bottom hem on the inside of your leg. Typically it's between 28 and 38 inches, which is about 70 to 95 centimeters. To learn more about the proper pants length, the break of your pants and how it all works together with your shoes, please check out this video here. Note, if you like super slim pants, the fabric will puddle a lot earlier, so you need... It's time for Pepto-Bismol, time for hospital-tested Pepto-Bismol. Note, if you like super slim pants, they will start puddling a lot earlier because they touch part of your foot earlier. In that case, you have to shorten your inseam by about half inch to an inch, sometimes even more, which is about one to three centimeters. When you buy pre-owned trousers and they have cuffs, you can typically always let them out unless they're faux cuffs and shortening is never a problem in general. High enough direct brands typically come unfinished, so you can go to your alterations tailor and get the length exactly right. When you have a pair of pants that you like, you can just lay them flat and then just measure along the seam from the crotch to the bottom hem. Next, we measure the out seam length, which will help us to determine the rise. And you measure it from the top waistline to the bottom hem on the outside of the pant. Now you subtract the inseam from the out seam, you have the rise measurement. Some bespoke tailors or major measure companies also measure the rise from your waistband in the front through your crotch to the waistband in your back. Personally, I really like higher-waisted trousers. I think they're more comfortable throughout the course of the day, and 
I also don't want to have a crotch that is too tight and constricting. Most ready to wear brands will not provide a crotch measurement or a rise measurement. Higher end made to measure companies will take the measurement and so will a bespoke tailor. Next up is a thigh measurement. Typically in a body, it's measured around the widest part of your thigh or pretty much in the middle of your crotch and your knee. Since there's no particular point, it's a little more tricky to measure it on a pair of pants, but you can roughly eyeball it a little bit underneath the crotch in that middle area where it's still quite wide. On an off-the-rack suit, your thigh measurement will typically determine how slim your pants can be. If you have an athletic build with really big thigh muscles, it will be tricky for you to find off-the-rack stuff. If you need a bit more space, pleats are really the way to go because they give you extra room, which is why I always favor pleats. To learn more about the pros and cons of pleats, check out this video. Now that you know what and how to measure, let's look at five general things to consider before you buy a suit online. Number one is the occasion. Do you wear this suit for a funeral, for a job interview, for formal board meetings, or are you maybe an artist who just wants to stand out from the crowd? A lightweight cotton seersucker suit will feel and perform very differently than a really heavy 14 ounce flannel suit. Also, your stylistic choices matter. The fabric, the cut, and the details. A tweed suit in brown may be great for the countryside or more for a person who lives in a very casual environment and just wants to wear this textured suit, but it won't be a good idea for a formal board meeting. Number two, don't just buy something because it's on sale. Yes, I know you want that deal and I do too, but if you look at the cost per wear, that's the most important aspect. If you buy this really nice jacket and you only wear it three times, well, it's actually quite expensive per wear. Compare that to a single-breasted navy suit that you can wear over and over again that may have a slightly higher price and it doesn't go on sale regularly, but it will be a much better investment for you. Of course, I've made some mistakes along the way and you can check those out in this video. Also, the navy suit may not be the best suit for you. So, not sure where to start? We got you covered. We even have some cool videos around building a capsule wardrobe, which consists of items that are very interchangeable and can be worn with one another, which results into a super versatile wardrobe. Which brings us to the next point, number three, which is be intentional. For many men, that means stick to classic patterns that are traditional and not too flashy. On the other hand, if you're an artist and you want a rust bronze orange suit, go for it. And we also made a video about what suits and styles to buy first. Number four, know what kind of buyer you are beforehand. If you want something that looks good, that is not too complicated and you don't want to spend too much time on it, and money is not of a big concern, yes, by all means, go with higher end off the rack or made to measure if you have time between when you want to start buying and when you actually need it. Otherwise, you'll just get frustrated. On the flip side, if you don't have money and you want a steal and you have time, pre-owned or vintage suits are your best bet. At the end of the day, the clearer your vision for what kind of experience you want and what your needs are, the better the results will be. Number five, be grateful and take joy in the sheer convenience you have today that enables you to order a suit just by sitting on your couch. Even though suit wearing isn't required nowadays, there is a growing number of men who choose to wear a suit because it makes them feel good and they enjoy the look of it. There are devoted groups where people enjoy wearing suits and dressing up. And there are also tons of menswear channels, such as the Gentleman's Gazette, but also many others, where you can learn a lot about classic men's clothing. Don't believe me? Well, just check out Sartorial Talks, Gen Style, Cavalier, Fit Man Style, Danny Wellington, Real Men Real Style, Effortless Gent, Gentleman Within, Modest Man, Men's Finest, Sartorial Styles, Vintage Bursche, or He Spoke Style. And these are just YouTube channels. I'm not even talking about Instagram profiles. So now that we got that general stuff squared away, how do you actually buy suits online? Let's start with the vintage suits. This option is really great for men who want a specific 
period silhouette, or maybe they like the heavier fabrics or the patterns that they can't find today. Of course, in order to hunt one down that fits you, it requires quite a bit of time. So if you can place a value on your time and take that into consideration, I think that will really help to not just spend 100 hours on finding one suit when your time is worth $100 an hour. Let's move on to off-the-rack suits and how to buy them online. The most common way is to buy them from the brand's website. Um, sometimes you can also find new suits in places like eBay, but those will typically be more one-offs where the size choice is limited. Buying from a brand's website usually entails having a nice size guide, being able to choose from sizes, and getting more information about the quality and the background. Also check on the return policy because it varies by country, but sometimes it can be quite generous. In terms of budget, you can also exactly dial in how much you want to spend because you can find suits for $100 online or $5,000 and anything in between. Don't just rely on the size you always wear because it can greatly vary between brands. For example, in a suit supply jacket, I had to wear a 46 jacket. I have other jackets where I'm a 42. That's a huge difference. Many sites will also use their own jargon and their own definitions. Sometimes they'll talk about super numbers, but it's not a legally protected term. And if you want to learn more about it, check out this video here. In the same vein, some companies call their made to order program, custom program, or their made to measure program, bespoke program. So buyer beware and always make sure to ask questions if they're not transparent about what exactly it is that they offer. Brands specializing in suits often offer different cuts or styles off the rack. Typically, there's something super slim, something in the middle, and something cut a little more traditional. Companies like Suit Supply have even more options, but not all styles are suited to all men. So make sure you read up on the differences and what you think best suits you. Sometimes I mean, you'll find brands that work particularly well for tall men. Others work better for shorter guys or more portly guys. For example, I know that a size 54 drop 8 in Isaiah with a 26 inch sleeve length is just a good off the rack fit for me. I like the way the armholes are cut and the sleeves. It's comfortable when I wear it and it just looks good on me. On the other hand, I couldn't find anything at Suit Supply that I liked and I tried on many different jackets even in store. Realistically, you can't expect to just buy a suit online and it magically fits perfectly when it arrives. Even if you think it does, hold your horses, order from a few other brands or order a few other styles, compare them all, and then make a decision of which one to buy. Honestly, you can read about soft structure and unlined and blah, blah, blah all day long, but unless you wear it and feel it, you don't know exactly what it's gonna be like. Also keep in mind that you should always budget for tailoring. And so it pays to have a good alterations tailor in town that you trust and you can eyeball, oh, this alteration here will probably cost me 100, 150, $200 on top of what I pay for my suit. So even if you get a deal for 50 bucks on eBay, if you add $200 into the alterations, you still have a really well-fitting suit for $250. That being said, with some body types or certain shoulder slopes, you will never get a fit that is 100% with pretty much any brand. That's when you go with custom clothing, which is made to measure or bespoke. Apart from the theory that you should end up with a better fit, you can also customize your suit. That starts with choosing from thousands of different fabrics typically, and then also selecting from different linings, different buttonhole colors, different buttons, and also the lapel width or the number of closing buttons, the pocket details, the vents, and so forth. If you've never ordered a custom-made or made-to-measure suit before, there's definitely a learning curve and a lot of men are overwhelmed by the number of choices. Because of that, many made-to-measure companies can actually offer a lot more customizations than they show on their website. So if you're a seasoned made-to-measure guy, you can always reach out to them and ask about certain changes because more often than not, they can actually accommodate them. Now, the degree of customization really varies with the made-to-measure provider. Some pretty much allow you to change the curvature of your lapel 
or allow you to change the size and position of your buttonhole and you can tell them what gimp thread you want used for your buttonhole. Now these are all very intricate details but sometimes they will say sorry can't do that and that's when you have to go to step to bespoke where there shouldn't be any limitations on the design front. Also, with pretty much all the made-to-measure companies, there are limitations on the stylistic front. Sure, you can say, I want a double-breasted waistcoat, but they may not be able to have the exact cut that you want. Or let's say you want a 30s, 40s, or 50s suits. Most of these online MTM companies won't be able to accurately accommodate you. Price-wise, online made-to-measure suits almost have a range that is as big as that of off-the-rack garments. So why should I buy an off-the-rack suit for $1,000 or more if I can buy a made-to-measure custom suit for $199? Well, even though the measurements may be good in terms of fit, it doesn't mean that all these measurements actually work out and the fabric is often subpar. The interlinings are all glued, the cut is not as refined, and so at the end of the day, even though the measurements may be right, it may be really uncomfortable to wear that suit because you overheated it and sweat all the time and you feel constricted when you move. The best suits are all handmade with flexible stitches and have a full floating canvas or are completely unlined. Less expensive suits often feature a half canvas construction or a fully glued construction. And to learn the difference about these things, please check out this video. For example, for my build, I would choose a higher end jacket from Atolini or Isaia from an off the rack line because I know how it fits, I can feel it compared to a lower end or even medium made to measure suit. There are tons of brands on the online made-to-measure market, but we haven't tested them all. If you'd like to see videos with comprehensive reviews on different brands, please share the specific brands in the comments below. Personally, I divide the entire online made-to-measure market into three separate categories. The below $400, the $400 to $1,000, and the $1,000 plus. Of course, these are all starting prices for their suits because even though you get the same construction, the price for the fabric can vary considerably. In the sub $400 bracket, you have suits from iTailor, Hockerty, Hanger, Taylor Store, Zootopia, or Richmart. In the medium $400 to $1,000 category, you have suits from Institu, Indochino, Suit Supply, Sartoro, Luxire, Lanieri, Black Lapel, and Oliver Wicks. Over $1,000, you have online made to measure and online bespoke offerings, including Articles of Style, Senzio, Langelli, MyTailor.com, and He Spoke Style and Michael Andrews. However, keep in mind that at this price level, you can get made to measure sometimes from several row houses, such as Steed or Kilgore or Richard Anderson. Of course, there are also many other made to measure programs, such as from Atolini, Keaton, Beckett and Rob, Brioni and so forth. By the way, if you're interested in moving on from online made to measure to the next step up, we have a guide on our website here. Personally, I would stay clear of the sub $400 online made to measure suits and even in the next level, I would skip the lower end there, such as Indochino, because I just feel it's too much of a compromise in terms of quality and wearing comfort. I also will always opt for the full canvas rather than the half canvas even though that may be a $200 upcharge. Now I hear you, you're in a really tight budget, but you want a made to measure suit, wait for sales. Most of those online made to measure companies have certain sales and certain fabrics. And if you can wait, just do that and you get a better quality suit at a price point you can afford. Last but not least, please keep in mind that while all these companies promise you 100% fit satisfaction guarantee, blah, 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 you probably will need one to two, sometimes three suits until you can really nail the fit. That's even true for most bespoke garments, by the way. The first one is never 100% perfect. So what does that mean for you? You have to potentially invest much more time into getting the fit, the details and the style right with one brand. But once you're there, it's very easy to reorder and get a suit with a fit that you like and the customized style that you're after. The suit I'm wearing today is of course one that I bought online years ago on eBay for just about 100 euros. 
It is made by Akaracini in Milano and typically costs several thousand euros. It is made of a nice crisp fresco fabric, which is perfect for summer. It has a nice sleeve lining, handmade buttonholes, and you can even see the tip on the sleeve is rounded so it doesn't wear so easily. These are all the small hallmarks of higher end garments. The shirt is an online made to measure shirt from the company Lanieri in Italy. It's red and white striped, made out of an Albini fabric. I'm combining it with a blue knit tie from our own brand, Fort Belvedere, and the pocket square in red and white, which picks up the color of the shirt, which is likewise from Fort Belvedere. And you can find it in our shop, just like the Edelweiss Boutonniere, which picks up the white, and the blue color from the shirt and the tie and combines it all together. My shoes are burgundy and have this elegant French long last and are from Cobbler Union. I'm combining them with a burgundy belt from the Fort Belvedere belt system, which you can likewise find in our shop, just like these two-tone solid socks in a gray and white that are the same color as my suit, but from afar and even from up close, they work really well together because of those two color tones. My cufflinks are gold monkey fist cufflinks from Fort Belvedere that match my belt buckle and my ring has kind of this cool white stone and is also gold. I found it vintage. <laughs>